Hello folks, welcome back to the Rupedia world and I am Abhinay Gupta and we are continuing with the standards of auditing, right? And the basic standard under consideration for today's lecture would be SA610, which is using the work of internal auditors, right? So this is not the first lecture for this standard. We have already started discussing about this, this particular standard in the previous lecture. Right? But yeah, we did not go anything substantial in the standard because over there, we basically concentrated our discussion over the internal audit function. Right? What is an internal audit function? What is the scope of internal audit function? Right? What are the parameters, what they do and everything. We actually discussed in detail the internal audit function, right? which is actually the ground on which this standard has been prepared. Right? But the standard, the using using the work of internal auditor, this standard is basically formulated with a view in mind to help the statutory auditor. So the statutory auditor actually needs to consult or needs to be concerned with the internal audit function. But this essay talks about his responsibility with respect to the internal audit function and not exactly about the internal audit function's responsibility or its task or its working. That will be discussed in a different standard, different set of standards actually that deals with the internal audit. Right? So we have discussed that part. We have discussed the inter internal audit function. And today in this lecture, we will actually start with what this standard has to say with the responsibilities of the auditor, of the statutory auditor and not the internal auditor. Right? So are you clear about the distinction that we are talking about? Right? So our standard SA 610 using the work of internal auditor deals with the external auditor's responsibility regarding the work of the internal auditors. And for this, he has to determine whether with respect to the auditing standard 315, this internal audit function is relevant for his audit. And if you refer back to SA 315, when do we say that an internal audit function will actually be relevant for your, your audit? is when the responsibilities and activities of the internal audit function right they are related to the entity's financial statement entity's financial responsibilities financial reporting and that the internal audit function that means the internal auditor's work can be used by the external auditor to amend right or to interpret his nte the nature time and extent of the audit procedure that the external auditor will perform Right? So basically what we understand is that you will only use the work of the internal auditor if as per SA 315 you find it relevant. That means it is actually working towards the same financial reporting funda, the financial reporting concept. Right? And when it has an impact on your nature, time and extent, on the nature, time and extent of the procedure that the external audit has to follow, auditor has to follow. Now do you understand? how and when to use the work. So that is basically the scope of this standard, right? In the previous lecture, we have discussed about two definitions, right? The internal audit function and the internal auditor. And we discussed about the scope and objective of the internal audit function. This is not the scope and objective of the standard, right? What were the parameters over there? Monitoring the internal control, examination of the financial and operating information, review of operating activities, review of compliance with law and regulation, risk management and governance. Right? But now today we'll move ahead with discussing the scope and objective of this standard. And what we talked about the SA315 part when we refer to SA315, that is again a part of the scope of this standard. So when we talk about the scope, you also see that, yes, the external auditor, when he is using the work of the internal auditor, right, he will also see the impact on his risk assessment. Like he has already performed a risk assessment procedure, right? He have analyzed the, he has analyzed the risk. He has analyzed the materiality of the audit, right? But now when he considers that, yes, the internal audit function is also relevant for my audit. And since they have done a major part, my work load decreases. Right, my risk decreases because they have worked really well. If that is what we conclude, right, it is not in all the situations. So when you think that yes, your risk assessment goes low, that your procedures go low, you reassess your NTE and you reassess your materiality and the risk assessment. 
right that is one one thing you understand and if you somewhere decide that no you are not going to use the work of internal auditor because that is not appropriate right then what happens is that the applicability of ss610 goes for a toss means yes ss610 will not be applicable on your audit if you are not using the work of the internal auditor that assessment part is not a part of this standard the standard does not talk about how you assess right there are other things we are talking about and we'll discuss about it so basically we have just two objectives when we talk about sa610 which is whether and to what extent to use the specific work of the internal auditor right where you're deciding whether you will be using the work or not right we have seen that in the scope as well how do you decide based on sa315 right whether they are relevant for the financial reporting and they are performing a similar or a related task right and then to what extent will you use their work for that what will you see you will see the risk of material misstatement you will assess the internal audit function that how efficient is it like uh, if or whether is it dominated by the management whether the those charged with governance of the management they pay attention to what the internal auditors they are communicating and do they react to that do they actually take their advices there are certain more elements that is added to it we'll talk about it later in the lecture now what you need to understand is that first you decide whether you will use their work and then to what extent will you use their work to what extent will you rely on their work right and what are the parameters that you will check for that we'll see later in the slides and when we talk about the specific work of internal auditor we are talking about only those work that will be related to your financial reporting because internal auditor as a whole he will be undertaking a lot of task right there are various aspects of the entire uh, entity that the internal auditor will check but you are not required to take all those information from him because you are not required to comment on those you don't need to use his work because that is out of your area of audit right so when we talk about the scope and objective you have to be very uh, clear and very precise with the use of words first is whether that means either you're using it or you're not using it if you're not using it the story ends but if you are using it then to what extent will you use it right and then what you have decided okay to this extent we will rely on the work now what is the work that you'll pick up you will use the specific work of the internal auditor what is that specific work that is relating to the financial reporting right that is how you interpret the statute interpret the statute right the next objective is whether such work is adequate for the purpose of audit again there is judgment involved again there is an evaluation task which will be a background for this right how do you judge whether it is adequate for the purpose of the audit okay with it is it is it clear so now i hope the scope and object of this audit is clear with you and you have been able to draw the distinction between the scope and objective of the internal audit function and the scope and object of the standard 610 right i hope it is clear with you and we move ahead with the second part of the standard which is basically the requirement but okay before the requirement we also have to determine certain things so you we need to determine whether the work of the internal auditor is likely to be adequate for the purpose of audit over here we saw the second objective whether such work is adequate for the purpose of audit here in the slide we'll see how do you determine whether the work of the internal auditor is likely to be adequate for the purpose of audit now for that what will you check first of all you will check the objectivity of the internal audit function what is their objectivity is there any biasness are they dominated by the management are they controlled by the management do they have their say in the entity right do they modify the procedures of the management if required are the recommendations taken by the those charged with governance people right these are the various aspect that you will analyze when you judge the objectivity of the internal auditor right next you will also judge the technical competence what is his qualification what is his degree what is his background what is his experience is he actually technically competent to take over this task do you think that yes he is technical enough to actually analyze interpret and give you a correct result as to what you are searching for 
if you think that yes they are able to do it they are able to fulfill that task they are able to qualify your bandwidth with that then you say okay i consider your work to be adequate right further you will also see whether their work the work of the internal auditor is carried out with due professional care okay i understand you have the technical competence okay i understand your objectivity it's not biased it is clear and you have to like report on certain aspect you are trying to find out the faults you are trying to rectify the things right but i you doing your task with due professional care and when we talk about professional care you talk about all the aspects that the standards define right over here the standards of internal audit right there are separate set of standard even they will give you some professional bandwidth within which you have to perform they will give you a scope within which you have to perform right and there will be some certain objectives that they have to fulfill so are they actually complying with those professional standards are they actually complying and doing their task with professional due care if they are yes they are relevant for your audit but if they are not then you will judge to what extent will you use it right are you getting what i'm trying to say and the most important thing after this is whether there is a proper communication between you and the internal auditor is there any barrier created or maybe the management objects no 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 you are not supposed to interact with the internal auditor directly if you have something please come to us we will ask the internal auditor and we'll let the, let those things available to you may we will make those things available for you then you say no 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 our communication is not clear there is a gap and there is an intermediary management when anything comes from management that is not a, an appropriate evidence for you why that can be manipulated right and if management is always putting a check on what is coming from the internal auditor then you know that okay they are dominating the internal auditor and hence you will not accept it as a less pervasive audit evidence you will consider it to be more pervasive sorry not pervasive persuasive sorry for that more persuasive audit evidence right so even the channel of communication the medium of communication and the intensity with which you communicate the frequency with which you communicate the kind of responses you get that is very important for you to judge and analyze whether the work of that internal auditor is adequate for you right so if you get certain question if you get this kind of question in your examination where you have to analyze where you have to actually say or where you have to understand or determine the objectivity right and these are the four points you have to write about the objectivity technical competence due professional care and communication and that is it right now i hope that is very clear with you now this determination when you are determining whether that work will be useful for you or not this is also a part of the requirement right so when we will be starting with the discussion of requirement that is our next slide right we start with the discussion of requirement there is one specific portion which refers to the previous slide so when we come to that i will just make a reference to the previous slide rather rather than getting into it and repeating the entire thing over and over again right so basically when we talk about the requirements the requirements are divided into three parts number 1 determining whether and to what extent to use the work of an internal auditor this is exactly what we have also seen in the scope in in the objective we know that yes we need to determine to what extent we'll use and requirement is how you determine right it is the procedure right determining whether and to what extent to use the work of the internal auditor and when we are actually determining it you have two evaluations right one is evaluation of the determine evaluation for determining the adequacy of the work and then determining the effect on the nature time and extent of the procedures so evaluation of the for determining the adequacy of the work so how do you determine the adequacy of the work you will again refer back to this slide right you will judge his objectivity his technical competence the due professional care and the communication that is uh being conducted between you and the internal auditor clear so we have covered the first part of the requirement and the second is to determining the effect on the nature time and extent of the procedure this is something we discussed while we were discussing the scope 
right that as per sa 315 when you decide that okay they are working on the same financial reporting concept that you are following right that means their work will be useful for you you have already decided the nature time and extent you have decided the materiality the risk assessment and everything but now when you have decided that yes now you can use the work of the internal auditor so you will now reassess the nature time and extent of your audit procedures right because now that internal audit function will have an impact they will reduce your burden right the extent the nature of the procedures will be a little liberal now why because if you have seen that yes things are already good it's already correct and the internal auditor has already drafted everything and given to you you can rely on that if you have judged the objectivity technical competence due care communication and everything for the internal auditor right now how do you determine the effect on the nature time and extent of the procedure is our next topic so when you you know that yes when you decided the nature time and extent of the procedures that you wanted to perform right till that time you did not have any clue whether or not you will be able to use the work of the internal auditor right but now when you have that work right you know that your workload has been decreased right how will you actually understand that yes it has been decreased when you actually evaluate the nature and scope of the specific work which you are using of the internal auditor how was that performed what was the nature and scope of the performance of that work what was the nature and scope of that internal auditor when he performed the task which you will be using right if his nature of the task was aggressive when he went into the detail to test a lot of things right when his scope was a very wide range of scope within which he has performed it and you know that yes it covers a large area of your audit function as well then your nature and scope will be reduced a little because he has already covered a lot of area from there so you will not again get in very rigorously right but yes you will check but you will not get in very rigorously into that area you will not be going on to do like going with some procedures detail checking increasing your uh, sample size your materiality level will, will be decreased no you can set a high materiality you can set a high performance materiality you can reduce the number of samples right the assertions that you check you can even compromise on any one of the assertion if you feel that okay internal auditor has appropriately disclosed that assertion appropriately tested that assertion right so there is a lot of thing that you actually determine you don't have to write all of these in your examination because this is the practical scenario that what you do in the audit right all you need to remember that yeah to determine the effect on the nature time and extent of procedure i will judge the nature and scope of the specific work which he has performed right next when you need to determine the nature time and extent right you will also see what risk assessment have you made if you have assessed the risk to be very high then even though internal auditor has worked on that you will still perform a greater depth of task why do you go to a greater depth now that that, that is because the in, the risk is very high so even though he has judged it but still there is a possibility that there is a risk there is a possibility of misstatement there is a possibility of fraud maybe right so you can't be light on that end you can't depend on someone else but if the risk of material misstatement is low and he has already performed the work very rigorously his nature and scope was very wide right then you can relax from that so what you write in the examination is that the assessed risk of material misstatement that you have already performed at the assertion level right which you performed for the particular transaction the account balance the disclosure i'm not talking about the financial statement level on the whole it is on the specific assertion level that you are checking and for which you have some data relevant data coming from the internal auditor so what risk do you have on that area will also determine the nature time and extent of the procedure right and third is the degree of subjectivity which will be involved the subjectivity which is involved in the evaluation of the evidences which evidences that are gathered by the internal auditor right how does it support the relevant assertion that you're talking about for which you have taken his work right what degree of subjectivity lies on that so there are three aspects that will decide your nature time and extent that is the nature and scope of the procedure that he has followed the risk assessment at the assertion level that you have done and the degree of subjectivity that you lay upon the work performed by the internal auditor on the audit evidences that he has gathered
right that is the only three aspect next in the series of requirement you need to understand how or what is using the specific work of the internal auditor what do you mean by using the specific work of the internal auditor so ultimately if you see the entire standard revolves around the objective that we have discussed if you remember we have used these words over there specific work of internal auditor and that is again the requirement part where you have the requirement laid down by the standard so whenever you go ahead to use the specific work of the internal auditor you just don't blindly say that okay this relates to my area this relates to my assertions please give it to me i'll use it i'll incorporate it into my audit procedures no you will not go blindly with that right what will you do is that you will first evaluate the work that is internal auditor has performed right you will perform certain additional procedures to check whether that work is correct and when you determine that yes the work which the internal auditor has performed is adequate for your audit purpose for the purpose that you are uh, for performing the procedures the purpose the target that you want to achieve is the internal auditor's work supported if they take you a step ahead towards that then you can use the work otherwise if they are talking at some different tangent and you are at a different tangent please avoid you are not using the specific work of the internal auditor right so when we talk about using the specific work right you have to evaluate that specific work before incorporating it into your procedures clear with that the last part is the documentation part so should you should we go to the documentation part are you clear with using the work of specific auditor i hope yes you are clear right but again from your examination point of view if you are given to write the answer right to determine the adequacy of the specific work performed how do you determine the adequacy then you need some content although i have explained it to you on a practical scenario basis what do you write in the examination right so let me give you some specific points for that so we will delay this documentation and we'll talk a little more about the specific work of the internal auditor how do you determine the adequacy now you remember we discussed that yes when you are using the work the specific work of the internal auditor you reperform certain task certain procedures on it right and you determine the adequacy right now to determine the adequacy what you basically check is that the work that you are trying to use was performed by an internal auditor who has that adequate technical training and proficiency yeah exactly something similar to what we have referred in the previous slide professional due care competency objectivity and stuff but over here you are actually checking the training do he, does he have the technical training has he performed this task earlier or is he new to it is he doing it appropriately how do you know right so you will judge his adequate technical training and his proficiency right next you will also see whether the work the internal auditor maybe he is not a single person he has a team right so if a junior member of the team has performed then whether that work was properly supervised right whether it was reviewed by the senior and whether it, it is properly documented as was the evidence whatever work was performed okay we know that the work was performed very well but if it is not documented very well you don't get it so if you want it in your hand in the appropriate context then you have to see that yes first thing the work was performed very well and secondly they are also documented very well right and you'll also see that yes if they have drawn a conclusion on any particular procedure then they have taken or accepted adequate audit evidences for that you will also check the adequacy of the evidence based on which they are performing a judgment they are forming a judgment right another way how you can check it is actually the conclusion that they have drawn right is that appropriate according to the uh, procedure they have performed according to what they have gathered right like if you have a b c three elements with you and based on that element are you drawing up an appropriate conclusion that will be a layman thing what would you do if you had those three details in your hand did they do the same thing that is number one right second you will see how consistent is it with the work that you have performed and even with the work that they have performed they performed the work they gathered certain evidences based on that they forming a conclusion and you see that okay the evidence is in the work they were talking at a different tangent and this conclusion is talking at a different tangent no they have to be synced right so that is how you check is it consistent right and finally if you have any exceptions or if there was any unusual matter that was discovered 
by the internal auditor and that has been already disclosed by them yeah this is something unique happening in the entity this is something out of the box we do not expect something like this occurring but yeah we have identified certain issues like this or certain procedures performed like this then you will see whether those issues and procedures were properly resolved if not it is a matter of concern for you now you will again reevaluate it right clear with it now i think it has been a little too lengthy about what we have been discussing and we have gone everywhere we have gone around everywhere and you are not able to conclude what is the content was all of it the explanation or do we have some content in it so don't worry at the end of the lecture i will revise the content for you so that you know specifically what is the portion that you need to remember and learn so before that we need to conclude it so the last thing is the documentation part where you will need to document what specific work you are using what was the conclusion that was drawn and what procedures do did you follow to decide or to determine the adequacy of that work that is it right that is actually the end of the standard we have discussed everything now if i go ahead to summarize the standard and tell you what was important for your examination point of view then we go back to the first slide right the most important aspect for you when you read the standard is first thing is okay go through the definitions right these are the two definitions provided to you then even the scope of internal audit function although that is not the objective of this standard but is a part of the standard even that is defined by this standard itself so you'll also have to learn these scope and objective of the internal audit function right all these six points monitoring the internal control examination of the financial operation information review of operating activities review of compliance with law and regulation risk management and governance followed by this you will discuss about the objectives of the standard whether the audit and whether and to what extent to use a specific work and whether such work is adequate for the purpose of audit this is exactly the two statement around which the entire standard revolves and now you go further to demonstrate it right we'll leave this slide first we'll go to this slide it is the requirement where you have three aspect determining whether and to what extent to use the work of the internal auditor using specific work of the internal auditor and documentation these are the three requirements actually this is requirement number 1 requirement number 2 requirement number 3 and these two are actually the part of this requirement right and when we talk about this where you evaluate evaluation for determining the adequacy of the work and determining the nte you go back to this this is where you evaluate the or you determine the adequacy of that work right and for the nature time and extent there are three more things that you need to conclude which is the nature scope of the specific task performed what was your risk assessment and what is the degree of subjectivity involved right and the last part that we discussed was actually an explanation part and that is not means integral part of the standard right but if you get an a question you need to expand it you need to get some important points in it you need to include it otherwise this is the content of the standard i hope that is very clear with you and with this we come to the end of this standard we have more uh, we had you know we have just three standards in the 600 series 600 610 and 620 so the remaining will be covered up in the next lecture we are done with 610 over here it is concluded you can go ahead with your notes and preparation as further on it and if you have any queries anything to ask any recommendations to make please use the comment box below feel free to use it we'll get back to you we'll reply to your queries and if there are certain recommendations we will be very happy to take them up so with that this is abhinav gupta signing off from this lecture see you back again in the next lecture until then thank you and bye bye